atomic orbitals in the periodic table. If you recall, we have an idea about the position and energy of electrons can be... To recap, the positions and energies of electrons in atoms can be described by atomic orbitals which come out of the Schrodinger equation. And each of these orbitals can describe a maximum of two electrons. And uh, in the n equals 1 level, an s orbital, this is a picture of a 1s orbital, looks basically like a sphere of electron density. And we define that there's a 90% probability that the electron can be found within this sphere. p orbitals have two lobes of electron density and are uh, aligned along a set of perpendicular x, y, z axes. And d orbitals have uh, five different shapes and directions of orbitals. But the question is, how, what are these used for? And when you're just beginning your study of chemistry, how much of this do you really need to know? Well, one important thing is that these orbitals have different energies. So, for example, the closer the electrons are to the nucleus, the lower their potential energy is. So a 1s orbital in the n equals 1 quantum level has, a lower, has, has electrons in it that are at lower energies. If we go to the n equals 2 level, remember that there are two types of orbitals allowed in that level, the s and the 2s and the 2p. Uh, and they're both at higher energy than the 1s. In the third quantum level, we see that there are three types of allowed orbitals, s, p, and d. And here's where it gets kind of complicated because the fourth quantum level also, which has four types of atomic orbitals in it, has the 4s orbital, which is lower in energy than the 3d. And the question is, how on earth do you make sense of this? And you could try and memorize it or use uh, some odd diagram or other, but the best way to do it is to actually use the periodic table, uh, because this gives it some meaning and some context. So if we go to the periodic table and look at how we can uh, kind of organize our ideas about um, where electrons are in orbitals and how this, what this has to do with the periodic table, we see that it makes a lot more sense. So for example, hydrogen, the first element, only has the n equals 1 quantum level and one electron. So there's one electron in the 1s, and we de designate that as the 1s1 electron configuration. Helium has two electrons, and so the second electron also goes into that 1s orbital. And helium is assigned the 1s2 electron configuration. Then we have to move to the next quantum level because we've filled up the n equals 1. So we go to n equals 2 and the next element is lithium. The next element, lithium, has three electrons. And it has two electrons in the full n equals 1 quantum shell and so that the next electron has to go into the second n equals 2 quantum level. So we say that the electron configuration for lithium is 1s2, 2s1. Similarly, beryllium, 1s2, 2s2. Next, we have to move across the periodic table to the boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon block, in which there are six elements and here the three 2p orbitals are filled up with a total of six electrons. Just how this happens we'll, we'll look at later when we get some experimental evidence from ionization energies. Go to the next quantum shell. Sodium and magnesium have outermost electrons in the 3s orbitals and aluminum through argon in the 3p. Now if you'll remember in the third quantum shell there are also d orbitals allowed. But in order to fill the 3D, it turns out that the 4S have to be filled first. So this is where the, the order of filling of orbitals kind of gets out of whack. 
And you just simply have to remember that the, all these elements over on the left-hand side of the periodic table have outermost electrons in the s orbitals. Those in the middle have electrons in the d, and over on the right they have electrons in the p orbital. In fact, we often refer to elements by the location of the electrons in their outermost orbitals. So, for example, the alkali and alkaline earth metals are part of the S block. Their outermost electrons are in S orbitals, and this, as we'll see, is what gives them such similar chemistry. On the other hand, elements over on the right-hand side of the periodic table have electrons in the P orbitals as their outermost electrons, and they have different kinds of properties than those of the S block. In the middle are the transition elements, the D block. As we'll see, the electron, the organization of the electrons in the periodic table is a little bit more detailed than we've made out here, but to understand the electron configurations in more detail, we need some experimental evidence to back it up. And as we'll see, there's an activity on ionization energy that will allow you to do that.